Welcome back to the channel everybody and it is a new season in Formula 1 but it looks like some things are just not changing. It's Max Verstappen that's on top again. In fact, it's Red Bull that's on top again. Max Verstappen, number one. Sergio Perez, number two. Uh, let's do a very quick race recap. So in the 2024 Formula One season opener in Bahrain, it was Max Verstappen that dominated from the start to finish, securing a win with a significant lead. And let me tell you, it was significant. His teammate Perez followed in second place, making it a Red Bull 1-2 with Carlos Sainz managing to claim the third spot on the podium after intense battles especially with his Ferrari teammate Charles Leclerc and at least he is his teammate for one more season. Um, the race saw its fair share of action right from the very beginning with Verstappen maintaining his lead after a strong start whilst Perez and Sainz navigated through the field. There were several notable incidents including a collision that sent Lance Stroll spinning and to pit for repairs early on. The use of DRS uh, played a significant role as well in uh, the race dynamics, keeping the drivers within close range of one another. Midfield battles were fierce, particularly between Ferrari, Mercedes and McLaren drivers. I, I don't know if I'd call them midfield, but we're talking outside of the top one team, which of course seems to be Red Bull. Um, positions were constantly changing between these ones due to strategic overtakes and of course the pit stops. Pit strategy and tire choice were crucial um, with most drivers opting for hard tires after their first pit stop. Verstappen's strategy though was flawless, allowing him to pit without losing the lead. Towards the end, Verstappen crossed the line 22.5 seconds ahead of his teammate Perez, improving upon his previous year's margin. Leclerc finished in fourth with Russell, Norris, Hamilton, Piastri, Alonso and Stroll then rounding out the top 10. The race sets the tone for the season with Verstappen. Stappen strong from Red Bull and of course establishing an early dominance once again he also set the fastest lap let's not forget so he had the clean sweep of points the battles among the teams indicate a competitive season ahead once again outside of Red Bull but you know it really does raise a lot of questions so are we going to see an utter dominance from Max Verstappen and from Red Bull yet again yep all the signs are yes we will um We'll get a better indication of this next weekend at the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix, but it really does not look good for the rest of the season. Now, who's going to come second in the Constructors' Championship? That is a significant battle. And I, I'm suspecting that once again, it'll be very similar to last season, where we're going to see this fluctuate between the different teams, uh, depending on which race weekend we're having. So we should expect McLaren will be stronger on one weekend, then it'll be Mercedes, then it'll be Ferrari. We've already seen that a little bit uh, at this weekend's Bahrain Grand Prix, it seemed like Ferrari had the slight edge on the other teams, but it was only very, very slight. Aston Martin are there or thereabouts as well. You can see they rounded out the top 10. Um, and then there seems to be a bit of a gap to the other teams in there who aren't really in contention. And there, there's some interesting speed being shown from time to time by the strike Sauber team, whatever we're going to call them. I'm just going to call them Strike Sauber for now. Maybe I need to change the way I look at them or the way I name them. I probably, I, do, I don't even know if I'm allowed to say Strike, but anyway, they are what they are. The the lovely black and green team. That's, uh, that's what they are. Um, RB, Red Bull, Toro Rosso, uh, whatever we're going to call these guys. Let's call them RB. Yeah, they, they may be competitive. Um, it looked at one point like they had taken a lot away from the previous car of Red Bull, but actually it's just the, the front wing and rear wing by the looks of it. Um, overall, that car isn't performing anywhere near last year's Red Bull. You know, if they, if they had replicated last year's Red Bull, I think this is where it would get really interesting. So it clearly wouldn't be as fast as this year's Red Bull, but I, I still think it could be the second fastest car on the grid. So it would be crazy if they could do that, but I, I think that's against the rules, so we won't go there. Um, it would make an interesting concept though to see if uh, Ricardo could, uh, you know, come in the podium places and potentially be a replacement driver for Sergio Perez moving forward. Although on that front, I, I really think it would be crazy of Red Bull not to investigate bringing Carlos Sainz back to the team. Sainz is showing as well. 
you know, when he's up against it last season, he was better than Leclerc, just ever so slightly. And this season seems like a continuation of last season based on one race, though, you know, one out of 24. So it's a, it's a very small sample size to be pulling from there. Um, yeah, and then, you know, we have all of the teams. The big disappointment, of course, so far has to be the Alpine team. What is going on there? This is a, this is a factory works team. And pretty much they look like the worst team on the grid. This is this is insane. What, what are they doing? So I wouldn't be surprised to hear that Alpine are pulling out of Formula One or something like that. You know, it's the usual cycle that goes around. Renault are in Formula One. They decide to leave Formula One. They supply some engines. Then they decide they want their own team. And then they decide they want to leave again. So we're, we're going to see that cycle keep playing out, I think, on the Renault slash Alpine side of things. Potentially, potentially. Now, um, uh, what I felt was most significant and let's say the biggest shadow of doom for the 2024 season is that they've changed the DRS rules. And so within DRS now, you only have to wait until after the first lap and then the DRS zones can be activated. So theoretically, if you think about this, you're like this is really good because it means Max Verstappen can't get that gap, you know, that he builds up after two or three laps and then, then you, you can't catch him with DRS. But yesterday, of course, he built a one point, was a 1.2 second gap between himself and Leclerc within one lap. And that really just goes to show you the, the dominance of the Red Bull, unfortunately. Um, Max Verstappen himself uh, does require a little bit of a conversation. So Max Verstappen is a great driver. I think he's really, really good. And I, I dare say, if you put Max Verstappen into the Ferrari, if you put him into the Mercedes, if you put him into the McLaren, he could still potentially be battling for the race win, especially if he was up against, you know, Sergio Perez, who isn't blowing it away in the Red Bull. He still came second yesterday, but he was 22 and a half seconds behind his teammate. So there, there is the Verstappen factor. He is that little bit better than everybody else, no matter what car you put him into. He's going to have an additional bit of performance. You see this with Lewis Hamilton. You see this with Fernando Alonso. They always have uh, an ability to outperform the car that they're driving. Um, does that mean that Sergio Perez is performing well and it's just that his teammate is so much better? No, I, I think it's it's a mixture. I think Perez could do better himself. Um, and he's going to come under significant pressure by the halfway point of this season if he doesn't start performing like he was in the first half of last season, I would say. Now, the signs are good. He managed a very strong second place yesterday. Um, uh, as in he, he he asserted himself, he came through the field, he took that second place, he was 22 and a half seconds behind his teammate. And of course, <laughs> of course, um, he finished, was it uh, just under four seconds ahead of Carlos Sainz in third place. Carlos Sainz talking about, um, you know, a, a driver outperforming the car. Carlos Sainz certainly did that yesterday for the Ferrari. You could see with Leclerc, the car was kind of going backwards, but Sainz was flawless, of course. He's in the shop window. He's in the market for a new team. Um, so kind of hoping for the best for him. Could he go to Mercedes? Could he go to Red Bull? It's very possible. I, I, in fact, I'd be very disappointed. I feel like we'd be robbed of a very good driver if that weren't to happen. Then um, the other interesting aspect I just wanted to mention before I sign off, and actually I have a web page open on this because I know there's been a little bit of activity going on with this, but it's the whole Yuki Tsunoda versus Daniel Ricciardo dynamic. Very clear team order came yesterday. It kind of made sense at that moment in time because Ricciardo was on the softer tires. Maybe they could have given the team order a little bit earlier. Sonoda really did not want to yield the position. I can understand he was battling another driver. It all leads to, I think, a very broken dynamic between the drivers moving forward. Sonoda, he doesn't have a filter. He doesn't hold back. He's going to say exactly what he thinks, and he did so yesterday. Um, so I, I, I can't wait to see how this plays out between these two teammates, but a little bit of fire, a little bit of niggle in there, that's really going to help the championship. So, uh, yeah. Very, very interesting. Um, let's sign off then with the championship standings. And basically, it's a reflection of the race yesterday. Uh, now, if I can find the championship standings here on my screen. So the driver's championship, no surprises. Max Verstappen leads. Sergio Perez is second. Carlos Sainz is in third. Leclerc is in fourth. Russell fifth. Norris sixth. Hamilton seventh. Piastri eighth. 
Alonso is in ninth, and then it's Stroll in tenth. And for the constructors' championship, well, it's looking ominous already. Red Bull on forty-four points, Ferrari in second on twenty-seven points, Mercedes in third on sixteen points, McLaren in fourth on twelve points, Aston Martin in fifth on three points, and then the rest of the teams have zero points. So you know, it's it's all to play for there. Um, yeah, if Red Bull manager won two at Saudi Arabia next weekend, oh well. It could be a very long season. Of course, it'll make my race predictions as easy as ever, where I say, yeah, I think there's a very high chance Max Verstappen is going to win the race this weekend. Um, and I do think he's going to win the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix before we've even set foot in practice yet. Um, can he win 24 out of 24 races? Uh, I think the, the laws of probability dictate that, no, that's just not going to happen because something has to go wrong at some point. Red Bull are going to have another Singapore or something like that. There's going to be technical issues. There will be penalties. Not that the penalties stopped for Stappen last season. And of course, Sergio Perez needs to actually have a really good weekend. That one weekend where he's going to be slightly better than Verstappen and there just won't be much Verstappen can do about it. So no, I don't think Verstappen is going to win 24 out of 24. Um, if there's a person that's capable of doing it, given the man and the machinery, then it will be Max Verstappen in this season's Red Bull. But I just, I, I can't see something like that ever happening, to be perfectly honest with you. Now, it would be great we'd clip this and we'll come back at the end of the season if I'm wrong. At least we'll have one interesting thing to talk about apart from, you know, another Max Verstappen World Championship. But, you know, he's a great driver. He's doing great things in that car. Um, maybe it would be more interesting if he wasn't in the best car on the grid. But... It is what it is, and we've seen this so many times before in Formula 1. We should just kind of enjoy the dominance, enjoy the greatness, if that is possible. I know we get robbed of a very close championship finish like we had in 2021, um, but these things will come around again. New regulations, of course, kicking in in 2026, so only two more seasons of this to go. I know, I know. Uh, thanks very much for tuning in for this video, and... Um, I may do a watch along again next weekend. It's going to be another Saturday race for the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix and that's due to Ramadan, I believe. Um, but we will be speaking to you very, very soon. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel as well. And I will speak to you soon.